So my metric tap hasn't arrived yet. So I ducked down to work and borrowed the set from work, which comes, uh, when we give them to the apprentices, it comes with the three of them, the, intermediate, the uh, tape and intermediate and bottoming tap. Also the drill bit required. So let's uh, drill this hole and tap it. I've slowed the RPM down on the milling machine. We should be good to go. Now you may have seen on camera I had a collet chuck in. I've now taken the collet chuck out because the taps here have actually, even though they're metric, they've got an imperial shank and my collet was out of that size. I don't have imperial collets, I've only got metric. So I put it in a normal drill chuck. Now I don't like doing that because the tap can run out, but I've checked it. It looks quite well, so I'm going to power feed in here on the quill and turn the motor off when I get close to depth. So I've gone as deep as I can, I'll back that off. Wind the knee down and I'll hand tap from this location. I've already gone through the uh, tape at intermediate, I've just put the bottoming tap in. Big shout out to Matty, thanks for the tap wrench, the tap handle mates coming uh, bloody handy. Matty's workshop, go and check him out. The next part I need to make is the keeper plate. Now the keeper plate goes underneath the sliding drawer and keeps it clamped down. The part needs to be 38mm long, 25mm wide. Got it in the vise, got it on some parallels, got an old high speed steel cutter in here. Let's take a lick and dress up one side. Now off camera I took out that high speed steel cutter and replaced it with my 12mm carbide. Um, I dressed one side, cleaned up obviously a datum face, went to the opposite side. I'm down to 39mm. I've typed it up here in the DRO, 39.1. So let's take a final cast pass now to bring that down to 38 Right, so I've got the keeper plate in the vise. I've marked out my hole locations and roughly the location of the V. Um, you can see it here. So I'll mill out that V section now, then I'll come back in and drill and do the counter balls. So I've got my edge finder in the machine. I need to locate the datum. In the plan here you'll notice the datum's on this front left corner. Okay, so I'll set up on the side of the vice jaw here and on the end of the part. A Y zero. And my X zero. So now I can drill the holes. I've just finished drilling both holes at 6.5mm diameter, so now I'll um, drop in with a counter ball. Eight millimeters deep. The keeper plate's now finished. Let's give it a little tickle on the surface grinder.
Now the next job before I get on the lathe is making the little uh, retainer plate. This part here, it's 50mm uh, long overall, 25mm wide, uh, distance between the two screws are 34 uh, so what I'm going to do here is take a lick on the left side, clean it up, flip it, take it down to length here, get it to 50, edge find it, find centre, step over, drill, step over, drill and countersink. Let's get into it. On the money, honey. Now we just got a counter sink. Okay, so I've just countersunk that. I've set my depth stop up, and you'll see here that it won't go any further. I dropped the screw in to check it. I know I shouldn't have my finger in there with the spindle running, but hey, if I get hit by that, I'm an idiot. So what I need to do now is to do this slot, okay? It holds the, the screwed shaft into the jaw, into the sliding jaw. Now I don't like holding it this way because as you tighten up obviously it will bow. However, I would have preferred to make a little fixture to bolt this down, a little aluminium fixture. But look, I'm just I'm short for time. I want to get this vice done. I've got other things to do. The material is 3mm thick, so it's not held in there by much. Just doing half a millimetre depth of cut. Yep. Not holding in by much now, we're going to be real cautious. See that little tiny corner holding it. Right, I just got away with that. Machining is very easy, but the hardest thing about it is set up and holding the workpiece. So what I'm doing here is just roughing out the screw shaft, just the end bit there on the right hand side you can see. Um, I'm just roughing that down, giving myself some room and then I'll continue machining when I put it between centers.
so we need to place a groove nine millimeters in from that end. Going to prepare the hexagon side now. I'm just going to plunge in with the palming tool, then rough it down a little bit. So I've just made a dead centre that's held in the in the chuck and I should be able to put my workpiece between centres now. I'm not sure how well you can see that in the shot. Um, I've now put the dog on it, I've got it between centres. I'll start parallel turning, I will be checking periodically because if my tail stop's not set up accurately it will turn a taper. So I may have to adjust that tail stop left or right. Okay, I brought you in for a closer look. Um, you can see I've roughed the shaft down. I'm about half a mil up, or 40, it's actually 0.45, 45. Now, it took me a while to chase in this tail stock, but I'm literally within 10 micron end to end, so I'm happy with that. So let's do the final cut. Right, I'm back in the milling machine. Um, I was going to put the indexing head on, but I'm just running out of time, so I'm just using a hex block. Now, if we use the indexing head, it's just or direct indexing. Use the degree wheel on the outside near the chuck. All right, this one here is simple. I'm going straight to depth 1.7. Away we go. And there we have one hexagon done.
Alright, I've brought you back over to the lathe. I've got it set up between centres. I've started taking my cuts. I've worked out that my depth is two, so the pitch times 0.61 is 1.22 millimetres. And you'll notice here that I've got the dial gauge set up. Now my lathe is all in imperial. It's got an imperial lead screw, so I cannot drop the half nut. Now you can do a little trick like Max Grant shows. You drop the half nut and then you've got to rewind and catch it again. I'm not going to take that risk. Um, I need to get this job done tonight. I'm going into surgery tomorrow, so this needs to be finished. Righto, vice is assembled, ready to uh, drill and ream it now. Now pre-drill it for the ream. Well there it is, it's all finished. The little rail mice, this is a, as I was saying, this is a uh, little apprenticeship model that we do with our second year students. So these are students who are just ticked over into second year. And there's two units called lathe and the other one's called milling. And the students make this and uh, they've got to screw cut that in the lathe of course and get all the parts concentric. and. Uh, when you make this, the biggest challenge is that when you drill this hole here, you must tap it immediately in the in the chuck. If you take it out and try and tap it later, you run the risk of the tap slightly going diagonal, and that throws that out. So remember I told you when I made mine, I didn't have a tap on hand, so I took the jaw out. I clocked it back in. I must have been a, a fly out, and it was just binding ever so slightly up the end here. So full disclosure, instead of that end piece being 10, it is now nine to make it work. Um, I've cut a really nice thread. There's no plane in it. It is a little bit tight. I probably could have just chased it one more time. But you know with threads you run the risk. If you try and chase it and run over it again, nine times out of ten you blow it out of size. So yeah, I'm really happy with the thread. And my little hex nut on the end there. So... I've given it a little bit of a surface grind here and there. I couldn't do it all. Um, at work, we've got the big toss surface grind, and I could grind that, not a problem at all. My little tool and cutter grinder struggled a little bit to do the top of these. And um, you can see a little blemish there as the arm, traversing arm, the x axis, bumped my leg and uh, made the wheel jump. So I just had to 
take a little bit of the wet and dry and polish that out but you can see it there now I'm not bloody happy with it so this guys I'm going to try and ship this up to Arthur at Live Tools um, it's Australian Manufacturing Week next week here in Melbourne I believe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday um, if you go to Arthur's stand um, he'll have some tickets you can enter for the free draw just go up to the Live Tools and tell them you want to enter the draw to win the little rail vice and uh, fingers crossed you might get it it's um, probably not one of the best jobs I've done, but it's uh, I'd probably give it a 9 out of 10 or an 8.5 out of 10 if I was being a bit savage. Rightio, well look, thanks for watching. Thanks for following on this video series. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next Aaron Engineering video. Cheers.